All right, in chapter 15, we looked at sound. I have a couple of videos that you can look at for those, if you remember. Uh, two videos that are on the YouTube channel. They talked about the Doppler effect mostly, so I'm not planning on a separate review for the Doppler effect. But what I didn't talk about in those videos were open and closed pipe resonators. And so we're going to talk about that here. This is the thing that allows us to understand why uh, you know, a tube will make kind of a humming sound when the wind's blowing across it or you can blow over the top of a, a Coke bottle or something and get a sound out of it. So these are tubes that will resonate. So something will cause them to vibrate and resonating means that they're going to actually get this increased energy of vibration from some other source and then that will allow it to make a sound wave that we can detect with our ears. To remind you about these pictures that we draw, we have the principal axis for a wave. Here's a sound wave going where, again, this is a pressure on the y-axis here. So regions of high pressure, low pressure. Remember that if I get a reflection over on one end over here and the wave starts to come back, then I can produce something called a standing wave. And I have some videos that talk about standing waves that you could look back at if you needed to. But so now what I'm drawing is one standing wave. And so we would have regions where this will go back and forth, back and forth. That same region in space will swing wildly from high pressure to low pressure. Whereas this region right next door is a node and it won't actually change its pressure at all. Uh, where over here, by the way, that was an anti-node and this was a node in there. So that's our standing wave. And then what we did is we tried to visualize those things a little bit. So over here, I'm going to draw a closed pipe. Over here, I'll have an open pipe. We had a requirement when you are open to the room or to the outside, so that's just the one spot for a closed pipe, but it's actually two spots for the open pipe. You're required to have a node. So take this picture that's here and rotate it. I'm going to go ahead and rotate clockwise when I do this. And let's see what it looks like when I put this in. I'm going to put in a quarter wave. So I'm going to put in this much of the wave into the closed pipe. So that's going to be starting from my node and then red's going to go down here and it's getting stretched out that's why it looks so different but we're still showing a standing wave inside of here so there's the the green part that I just had and then the red part is up there too so we have that picture and then let's go over here and I'll go from node to node so I'll grab say this section looks like when I rotate this clockwise I'm gonna have red on the right side it's gonna be over here and then I'll grab my green. Okay, here we go. So this is what it's going to look like inside of these, these tubes. So the center of the tube will actually have a region that's, a, that's an antinode, and it's going to swing wildly back and forth with high pressure to low pressure. When we have a closed tube, though, the reflection happens down here, and you actually get an antinode at the bottom of the tube, where this is a node up here. So we have a node here and a node here. I'll remind you that if I just say, hey, here's the length of those tubes, then we get to these two equations that are up here. For a closed pipe resonator, since I'm only containing one-fourth of the wave, it's one-fourth of a lambda that is equal to the length of the tube. But for an open pipe, I'm actually containing, again, let's go over here. So here's my L for an open pipe. I'm containing one half of a wave. Let me see if I can help you see with perhaps a blue marker where a full wavelength is. So I'm going to start there and then I would track down here. I would go up and then in blue I just drew a full wavelength. So you can see that we only have half a wavelength inside of this open pipe and that's why we have a one half lambda sitting there. We have this old standby equation which is true for any waves 
that says the velocity of a wave is equal to its frequency times lambda. You'll see that lambda shows up in all these equations, and it's kind of the thing that'll pass between when we do problems. And v, the velocity of the wave, since we're dealing with sound and velocity is determined by the medium, we'll be able to say that that's the speed of sound. So let's uh, start with a quick little problem, and let's say that I have perhaps a, a bottle with a little open top there. I'm not sure how tall a bottle is. I'm just going to say it's uh, 18 centimeters. And I want to know if I'm going to blow over the top of this bottle. It's a closed pipe, so it's open up here, but that doesn't make it an open pipe. If you have one closed end, like I do down here, you are a closed pipe resonator. You have to have both ends open to be an open pipe. All right, so this is a closed pipe resonator that is 18 centimeters, and when I blow over the top of this, what sort of sound will I get out? What frequency? So what's the pitch of the sound? What I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that there's my L. I'm going to be in preferred units, so I don't like 18 centimeters. I prefer 0.18 meters. That's my L. I'm doing my closed pipe here. That's going to be equal to one-fourth of my lambda. So when I do the mathematics, multiply 0.18 by 4. Lambda is going to be equal to 0.72 meters. Now that I know what lambda is, I can come over and I can say, that, well, the velocity is equal to the frequency times lambda. I'm trying to solve for the frequency. Velocity is 343 meters per second. Speed of sound is equal to the frequency times the lambda I just solved for. That's in meters. And I find that the frequency is equal to 476.4 hertz. That's my final answer. Let's see one more math problem just to make sure we're getting the hang of this. This time I'm going to say I want, so I want an open pipe that makes a 600 hertz frequency. So that's my goal. How long would that pipe have to be? So what is the L in order to do that? I have some information here about frequency, and I'm going to use that from the get-go. So I'm going to draw into this equation to begin. I'm going to say 343 meters per second is equal to my known frequency, 600 hertz, times lambda. Lambda is going to be equal to 0 0.57. I'll go ahead and round it there. 0 0.57 meters. Now I go in and I just grab my open pipe resonator equation and I find that L is going to be equal to half that. So L is going to be one half of 0 0.57 meters or L equal to 0 0.29. I'll round it like that. Meters. There's my L. The last thing I'll remind you about that is more of just a conceptual is remember we had these things called harmonics and a harmonic means that you're going to add extra nodes into this. So let me draw the first harmonic for both of these. Because it's the first harmonic I need to add one extra node, one extra node. I want to make sure I'm stressing that. So I'll do it for both of them. I'm always going to have a node there, a node there, and a node there because those are the things that are open to the atmosphere. Now I need an extra node. So I'll have an extra node inside of that open. On my closed, I have an extra node. In practice, it is closer down here. And then I will go ahead and use those same kind of color schemes that I was doing. Okay, there's my red. In fact, I'll draw my red over here too. Then let's draw my green in. So there's the first harmonic for both of these things. So inside of this open pipe on the first harmonic, you actually have a full wavelength. And so we could modify our equation if we wanted to, and we could say that the length of the pipe is equal to lambda for the first harmonic of an open pipe. Over here, you look at this a little bit closer and you actually find that you have three-fourths
of a lambda inside of this. So 3 fourths lambda is going to be equal to the length of the closed pipe resonator uh, for the first harmonic. So I think that's all I have for you for this, guys. If you think you got it all figured out, let your computer know.